It's not always an easy decision, but sometimes it's a necessary one. Every small business owner at one time or another is faced with the reality of having to raise prices for their product or service. In a down economy, the decision is even more difficult. You clearly don't want to lose your customers, but not every client is willing to pay more. So what do you do? Marley Major is the CEO of The Party Goddess, a full-service event planning and catering company. She is here to tell us how to price for profit without jeopardizing your customer base. Great to see you, Marley. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, number one, adjust your formula, your packages. Sure. It's a better idea than just saying, I was $60 an hour, now I'm 80 So instead, change how you price. So if you charge an hourly rate, why not say, okay, here's a flat fee or charge as a percentage of what you're coordinating, let's say, if you're an event planner. But by mixing it up, then the customer isn't comparing apples to apples. And so it's not as easy to say, oh, wow, her prices went up 50%. You've just changed your model. And then by getting more efficient, of course, you're making more money. So if end. you do that, do you still, let's just say you had $60, do you still need sure. to offer something that is $60 or no? Not, I don't think necessarily. I think as long as you communicate ahead of time what you're doing with your, with your customers and how you're structuring it, you're fine. Okay. So stricter parameters. What do you mean by that? Stricter parameters. What happens is if you do do change your pricing, and, and obviously if it's hourly, it's easy. You're on the clock, you know, tick tock. But if you're not, and you do charge a flat fee, or you do charge a percentage, you have to be very clear about what that includes and what it doesn't include, because otherwise you end up having to do all these extra things that aren't part of the project. So for, an, for example, for an event planner, if let's say I hire you as a wedding planner, and then the next thing I know is you've got this flat fee, and I'm the bride thinking, okay, I, you're going to come with me to find my dress, you're going to do this, you're going to be at every fitting. No, you're thinking you're just coordinating the day of. So you've got to be super clear about what it includes, but then use it as a marketing ploy to get more business by saying what it doesn't include. So you can say, but I can do this, this, and this, that kind of and thing. And basically put those other things a la carte. Correct. Okay. They're a la carte. And then the customer's like, oh, wow, I didn't even know she did those things. But then it's much mm. clearer from the get-go. And that's your other point is be clear. Be clear. And you have to be clear, and you can't just come to somebody in the middle of a project and say, oh, by the way, I decided to raise my prices. That doesn't work. But what you can do is do it ahead of time, and again, you can use it to your advantage as a marketing strategy. You can say, hey, listen, because of the economy or this or that, I've had to, you know, I'm changing my pricing structure. However, create some sense of urgency, and if you book me by X date, you're a great customer, I will grandfather in those old mm -hmm. rates, that kind of thing. And especially if you do it at a time when you might be slow. So it could be a great time, if you're slow in July and August or November or something, send out that marketing piece and then you can use it to get a little bump in business. I think that grandfathering the old rates is really helpful because you feel like now you've done something special for me. Absolutely. And then I feel valued as a customer. And let's face it, that goes to the next point, which is you have to provide really great customer service. You can't change your pricing or raise your pricing and then say, oh yeah, uh, I'm going to have lackluster performance. No, you really need to be on your game. So make sure that your staff Staff is ready to go. All those systems are go before you decide to raise those prices. And people are going to object. People are going to object, but it's really important to have a script and a plan ahead of time about what those objections are going to be. So many times I see small business owners, and the first time they answer an objection to a customer is in front of their best customer. Forget it. Figure out what are your top three to five objections that most of us get, and then kind of write a script and role play with somebody who's critical ahead of time so that that person can say, okay, you don't sound convincing at all, or you, you look so nervous, or you're not making eye contact. Practice Practice answering those objections so that you really come across like you know what you're doing and they're justified and people will feed off of that confidence. I think also if you have a good relationship with your customers and you say, look, you know, the economy is it's bad out there, I right. have to raise it. In, in many times that might be enough because they'll care about you. Absolutely. Uh, in other times it's what you talked about in the first one, you change your package so you're offering them a little bit more that doesn't cost you anything. Correct. And I always say offer something that is very valuable to them, high value to them, low cost to you. And each of us in business have certain things that we can throw in that the customer will feel thrilled about that don't cost us anything. Right, right. Okay. Well, Marley, thank you so much. This was all great advice. Thanks for having me.